Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about double under file and what it means in Python. And I'm going to show you a few examples of how it's kind of useful and maybe you can do the same in your apps. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so double under file is a special kind of built-in magical name that shows up in Python files. Uh, well, in pure Python modules, we'll have a double under file attribute. Uh, so if we make just a very simple file here and we print double under file, uh, I'm also going to make a directory to show you some situations where it doesn't show up. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, but we have this very simple file here and I run it with Python. I'm specifically using Python 3.8 here because there's another thing I'm going to show you in a sec about it. Um, but you'll see that it's printing exactly the file that we ran here. And I believe if you give a full path to this, yeah, so if you use a full path to the file, then double under file will have a full path here. So it kind of changes a little bit based on how it's executing in old versions of Python. Uh, they changed this in Python 3.9, uh, and I did a video on Python 3.9 and actually called out this change. I will try and remember to link that in the description. Uh, but in Python 3.9, it is always going to be an absolute path. So independent of whether we call it with this, oh, and PWD is uh, this. So I'm doing a little bit of variable substitution there. Figured I'd call that out anyway. Uh, but yeah, in Python 3.9 and above, it's always going to be an absolute path. So you can kind of depend on that in your code. Uh, now, this doesn't seem super useful without <laughs> any further explanation. Um, but the cool thing about this is it means that you can locate where your file is on disk and you can find files adjacent to it. Uh, so I actually use this in my advent of code solutions. So if we look at those, uh, day, we'll look at day one. Um, actually, let's look at an old year so that I don't spoil anything for the current year. Uh, ASC 2018, that one's very old. Oh, wrong repo. I think I did this back then. Oops. 2018, day one, part one. Nope, this is before I did that trick. Dang it. <laughs> okay, well, then spoilers. Uh, I'm going to show you the current year. <laughs> I've improved my template over time, and so that one apparently does not have the, the nice parts there. Oh, actually, I can just show you the support code. Support code also does this, so it's not, uh, not going to spoil anything here. OK. So you can see here that I am accessing double under file and I'm marking that as here. So what this, this variable here is going to represent is, uh, and again, I'm targeting Python 3.8. I will eventually target a newer version where it is already an absolute path. So I'll be able to get rid of this in code. Oh, that's actually a cool idea for pi upgrade. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for the absolute value of the current source file. And then I'm looking at the directory that that exists in. So in this particular case, um, it's going to assign this absolute path to that variable. And then later on, I can access files relative to it. So I conventionally set up my repository to have a little secret.n file that is one directory up from this support directory, and I can read that file. And that means if this directory blob or you know this clone moves around, I don't need to hard code any paths because that will always be relative to the current path. Uh, and that's honestly the most common case that I use double under file for. I also occasionally use it to do debugging. So for instance, if I have uh, some sort of, um, I don't know, some library, what's a library I can install? Uh, Flask, for instance. Um, sometimes I may be debugging and I have imported Flask and I want to see where Flask lives on disk. So I can look at double under file here and then easily open up the source of Flask and start poking at it. Um, so I often use file for that as well. OK, uh, I wanted to talk about some situations where file will not show up. And one of those is some compiled uh, shared object executables, uh, shared object modules. So for instance, if I install, I don't know, what's one that I've written? Oniguruma CFFI, for instance. And this ships with a little shared object here. Uh, so you can see there is this onigurumacffi.abi3.so, and we can import that module. 
And I believe it does not contain double under file. Oh, that one does. Some of them do, some of them don't. Apparently CFFI adds it for you, uh, but maybe CFFI does not. No, they probably did it in both cases. CFFI backend. Oh, that one has it too. Okay, well, some of them do not. <laughs> These ones apparently do, so <laughs> there goes that explanation. Uh, but another case where they don't show up is for namespace packages. A namespace package is a folder that does not contain an init.py, um, often used to build a bunch of different things separately and then install them all together. Uh, but this T2 directory is technically a namespace package, and it does not contain a file. And this is because, or it has file, but it is none. And this is because it doesn't exist on disk anywhere. It's just, you know, it is a folder, so it doesn't have, it doesn't have a file. Um, but if it's a folder with an init.py, which we actually saw earlier, uh, file will point at the init.py. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to explain about this. Hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.